Welcome to Aldea's Roundtable Conversation on Comprehensive and Effective Consumer and Community Banking. I'm Lorraine ballard Morrill. I'm the Director of News and Community Affairs for the six iHeart Media stations in Philadelphia. Small businesses, especially those in marginalized communities, often face challenges when it comes to obtaining capital, including limited access to traditional financing, bias and discrimination, lack of financial education and resources, limited networks and connections, language and cultural barriers. Also, the lack of collateral and credit history can be barriers. That's where Chase Bank's community banking lies in its ability to provide accessible financial services, support local economic growth, promote financial inclusion, engage in philanthropy, and foster strong customer relations. By actively participating in and contributing to the communities they serve, Chase Bank plays a vital role in the overall well-being and development of those communities. In addition, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of Philadelphia provides a wealth of resources designed specifically to support Latino businesses. In today's panel, we have an outstanding group of people joining us today. They will provide insight into how businesses can better access the tools provided through Chase and the Hispanic Chamber, and will also speak to a business owner who has firsthand experience. Uh, to show and share with us. We do, as I say, have an extraordinary group with us. Let's begin by having them introduce themselves. We begin with Chandra. Hello and good evening. I am Chandra Williams and I'm the community manager for Chase here in Philadelphia. And I'm excited to be here and add to the conversation around comprehensive and effective consumer and community banking. Okay, thank you. Way. Thank you, Lorraine. Josue Figueroa, senior business consultant with Chase and what I'm able to do is to coach and mentor small businesses. Hi, um, my name is Rosemary Marmolejos. I'm the owner of the Mama Sofritos company. Um, is a manufacturer, my Mama Sofrito manufacturer, um, uh, complete seasoning. Um, uh, and, and I thank you for the opportunity for being here and share my experience to another entrepreneur and minority um, business owner. Fantastic. And Jennifer. Um, Jennifer Rodriguez, it's great to be here with our partners Chase and Aldia. I am President and CEO of the Greater Philadelphia Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Fantastic. So let's get to it. We begin with Chandra. So tell us, what is the role of a community manager? So the role of a community manager, Lorraine, is to be a local ambassador for Chase and to build and nurture relationships with local businesses, key community leaders, nonprofit leaders, and small businesses at the neighborhood level in my community center, which is located in the historic 52nd Street business corridor. So the role is in direct um, outcome of the $30 billion racial equity commitment that um, we made in 2020. And my three main responsibilities as a community manager are to listen, which I meet regularly with local leaders to understand the unique needs and the challenges of the community. Secondly, to build relationships and trust, organize and work side by side with community leaders and residents in the community service. And then thirdly, to improve financial health. So we deliver financial health inside of the branch community room as well as in uh, the communities on small business uh, workshops and master classes as well as personal financial health. Okay, this is very important information to know and also important is understanding what a senior business consultant is. Josue, tell us more. Sure, so in my role as a senior business consultant, what that means is that I'm able to take my 30 plus years of experience working in the for-profit banking industry, the nonprofit, the federal government, and be able to take those experiences and deposit them into minority entrepreneurs in order to assist them in establishing and uh, reaching certain business goals that they might have for themselves. So what we are able to do is to come alongside and identify businesses that have been around for about two years or more, and then through a SWOT analysis, develop a curated mentoring program that's specifically designed to meet them where their internal strengths and weaknesses are in order to position them to take advantage of opportunities when they present themselves. Well, we're going to be talking to someone who took full advantage of that. Rosemary, tell us how you found Chase. And I think for a lot of businesses, they don't know what they don't know, right? So how did you find out about Chase and what they had to offer? Well, um, it was one of um, 
those moments in you know during the pandemic that a lot of entrepreneurs and you know small business owner were like overwhelmed looking for some type of resources or some type of you know guidance to just don't fail on you know their business and um, I did I, I I'd apply for some um, um, counseling on not counseling but mentoring that they have available I fill out the application and um, Josue um, contacted me and since then he's been working with me and it's been amazing it's been a you know extraordinary help for me and my business fantastic and we're gonna get into more details on exactly what that very means. excited to do so yes that's great and well Jennifer let's talk about community banking uh, the Hispanic Chamber has many wonderful connections with institutions like Chase tell us what community banking means to you so at the core community banking should mean access it should mean that there is an institution that is credible, mm -hmm. that has people and resources mm -hmm. that you, regardless of your state in life, whether you are rich or poor, in the case of the Latino community, language access, do they have somebody that speaks your language? Do they have somebody that empathizes with you and your circumstances? Do they have products and services that meet your needs, that are truly mm -hmm. accessible? Mm -hmm. So that is really what community banking is. And I think in many ways, um, Chase coming into the city of Philadelphia and certainly with a really strong relationship in the Latino community have, have embodied that. And I think Josue you know, is part of our team. Um, and if you're wondering how do you get to access all of those things, you as an entrepreneur need to step away from your business and participate in the economy in, in the in the in the networks that exist and I think mm -hmm. a really great conduit yeah. are business associations networking whether the Hispanic Chamber or another one of course we would like it to be ours but there are a number of organizations out there that do have these connections but unless you step outside and participate it's going to be very hard for you to do it on your own. Just to follow up on that, um, about the importance of community banking, talk about the efforts and the importance of the efforts of the JPMC racial equity commitment. Look, there are a lot of commitments out there. <laughs> they are very few that equate or even come close to what Chase has done. And I've been observing this and really seeing a witness to, to the impact and, and the commitment itself. I sit on the board of the United <coughs> States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and Chase has invested uh, in that institution and in our community very significantly and coming into the city of Philadelphia and making available the kinds of product services and frankly, in my opinion, people like Josue and others is, is really the kind of support that we want to see uh, more of, and, and we thank Chase for being part of it. Chandra, back to you. Um, tell us more about the Chase Community uh, Centers, what they are. So under our racial equity commitment, Chase is committed to opening community centers, which are a unique style of banking. Philadelphia is one of the 17. We have several across the nation, Mattapan in Boston, Washington, D.C., uh, Minneapolis. And in this bank, there is not just the traditional branch, <clears throat> but there's also space for programming. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, master classes, we have financial health workshops, we have opportunities for youth to, do, to obtain personal and business entrepreneurial workshops. Mm -hmm. And so in, the, in this year, we've already had over 100 workshops financial help workshops in that space. And so this type of banking is new to have a branch and space for programming, but we're excited about the programming that we're able to offer in the Philadelphia at 52nd and Lolo. Oh, that's fantastic. Josue, uh, back to you. Why is it important for banks like Chase to show up for small businesses and communities across the country? So, you know, going back to what she, uh, Jennifer, had referenced earlier with regard to being in the community, being involved, being in the networks, if you will, there's certainly an aspect of access to capital that, that businesses need. But then there's also the intellectual or the educational capital that can be provided through the ma master classes like Chandra was mentioning. And oftentimes businesses could benefit from a better understanding and seeing through the lens of a financial institution what is needed and required in order to access the working capital, the cash that's needed 
for them to grow their business or for them mm -hmm. to expand or for them to be able to provide marketing, whatever it is that they might need with regard to, to the, the cash that, that's needed to operate and run a business. But that intellectual capital, that education, that mentorship, I think helps to fill in the gaps with business owners that might be struggling and not realizing that they're getting declined for something that they could work on, such as their personal credit score, or perhaps improving their bookkeeping practices, uh, things that are fundamental to, to a business to allow for them to access other resources that might be available to them if they're able to improve in certain areas. So I think that being accessible for small businesses and to be able to provide that, that information, that education, and in the case of Chase Bank, we're able to do that at the community center. So we're able to host those workshops in person, which allows for not just the educational aspect of it, but then also the internetworking of other business owners speaking to business owners and hearing their stories. Well, how did you overcome logistic issues? How did you overcome your marketing issues? You know, what, what was it that allowed for you to feel that you had finally made it? Or what was it that, that threshold that you went through? So those networks that they're able to establish and build, I think are also critically important. That's great. It's really Chase Bank meeting people where they are, which yes. is mm -hmm. really important. Well, Rosemary, that's exactly what happened for you. And I wonder if you could talk a little bit about Josue and uh, <laughs> what he had to offer, some of the things that maybe you didn't realize that you were able to, to tap into. Tell us how he was able to help you. Well, um, I can resume all that in one word. I mean, he resolved my whole business um, direction and goals mm -hmm. in, in myself, my head. After you know, I, 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 I met him, he guided me um, on what to do because basically a lot of entrepreneurs and minorities, especially minorities, we start a business with what we think it should be, mm -hmm. but it's far away from reality. Mm -hmm. So that's when um, you know, a mentor comes in and really help you out and give you guidance and what to do, um, how to, um, you need a, a business strategy, you need a business um, foundation, you need to um, get licenses, you need to get permits. And you know, Jose, Jose has been um, everything for me and my business, you know, has it's, it's been really empowering me to to continue because it was at a point that I was like, you know what, um, I think this might not be a good idea. Mm -hmm. So that's when I met him and, you know, he guided me on what to do, uh, where to um, get the resources I needed, um, how to create a whole business plan and make it work. So he's been more than helpful for me. Awesome. And I'm very grateful. That is well, you've done all the work. <laughs> <laughs> Without you, it wouldn't be possible. Well, Jennifer, um, actually what um, Rosemary said is, is so typical, isn't it, of small businesses? Regardless of where you are, as a small business, oftentimes there's a great idea. Like, Rosemary had a great idea, mm -hmm. and we need to talk about that sofrito, so we'll, we'll talk <laughs> later. But uh, tell us more about the importance of for the average Latino consumer or small business, what are some of the things that they need to understand about banking that maybe they don't know? Yeah. Well, number one, I would say that what I often tell entrepreneurs is that entrepreneurship is not a do-it-yourself mm -hmm. project. Mm -hmm. And too many of our entrepreneurs think it is they do everything all the time. And no, that's not it. Actually, your goal is to bring a whole community of experts and trusted people to help you advance your goals. So if we start thinking that way, you know, as an entrepreneur, if you, if you really think about entrepreneurship as a community project instead of a do-it-yourself project, you will soon find that what you wanna do is you wanna hire out your weaknesses. So if you're afraid of your financials, meet somebody like Jos Josue. He will sit down with you and he will help you feel comfortable with your financials. If your marketing is not that great, there is somebody out there that can help you with marketing. Now, 
Philadelphia has a lot of resources, right? And so finding them can be pretty confusing and overwhelming. And again, that's where I say come to business associations and networking organizations that have the credibility in the community to provide you with the resources. And so why is banking so important? You know, you need, whether you like it or not, as an entrepreneur, if your goal is to grow, you will have to have a relationship with a bank. Mm -hmm. You will have to get to know somebody in a financial institution that can really help you <coughs> achieve your goals. Not all banks are the same. Not all relationship bankers are the same. So finding one that really meets your needs is very important. Now, you know, you, we have here the folks at Chase. They have made a commitment in our in community that I think it's very unique. They have. There are people like Josue out there that have been hired whose sole purpose is to provide technical assistance to businesses, right? That is the sole purpose of his existing. That's very unique for a bank. Banks usually bring somebody out and they want to sell you something, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that I find that is particularly unique and, and, and really something that I really like a lot about what Chase is doing in Philadelphia. Well, Chandra, uh, we talk about community centers, meeting people where they are, and I have to say, I see Chase Banks everywhere. It's like you've popped up everywhere, and it's fantastic. So where can we see, where, where are the Chase Community Centers located? So we're actually located at 15 South 52nd Street, and let me say, we're still growing, so expect mm -hmm. to see more, um, but we're at 52nd and Ludlow, which can be accessed via um, SEPTA. It's right on the um, corridor of 52nd Street, and it's a, it's a very beautiful space that has become a community, so 15, 15 South 52nd Street is where we're actually located, and then we also have the uh, branch in the Aramingo section, um, which works as a pair where we have branches around um, the 52nd Street location, but also in Aramingo is where our other community manager sits. And you're opening them up all over the country, right? Yes, we are. So there will be to a total of 17. Yeah, that's fantastic. Josue, um, it's been tough for small businesses. Sure. And this has been very tough for everybody these last few years. Can you kind of put a pulse on how Philadelphia businesses are doing right now? Sure. So, you know, as a result of, of the pandemic, a lot of businesses certainly uh, suffered. And the reality is that many businesses often don't have enough cash on hand to survive even a two-week closure, um, let alone anything that's larger than that. And being prepared and weathering for the storms is important. And that's something that we often talk about with business owners is what are you doing to mitigate against any storm that might come? And uh, as a result of the pandemic, I think a lot of businesses have taken a look at how they used to do business and realized that we need to make some changes going forward. So I think that businesses in Philadelphia um, uh, are still having struggles with regard to staffing, inflation, logistics, right, getting things delivered and the like, but Philadelphia is still a great place for business. It's still a great place for new opportunities. Uh, you know, nearly two-thirds of private sector jobs come through <coughs> small businesses. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's critically important to support the work that they're doing. And as I had mentioned to you, so access to capital is one, but that intellectual capital in terms of, well, what do I need to do to prepare for the next unforeseen storm that comes, okay? And that's where having a conversation about managing cash flow can come into place. And if I do need a loan or access to capital, what does the bank look for? And how important is my personal credit? Those are conversations that can be had in order to position them to take advantage of potential opportunities that come down the pike. And even with grant applications, many small businesses don't realize that there are small business grants that are available to them. Um, and having these conversations about different ways to access credit is important, um, as well as with the minority certifications that can open up mm -hmm. doors. Uh, so just, again, just having the conversation about what are the resources that are available, not just through a bank, because right, most people think that a bank only has money for them, but there are other resources that are available to them that can better position them to access the money that they need. 
Rosemary, you've been on this journey of creating this business, becoming an entrepreneur, making mistakes, learning, and moving forward. And I wonder if you can talk about some of the things that you wish you knew sooner. Um, I would have said the knowledge of all the resources out there. Like Jennifer um, said before, um, we as entrepreneur would think that is uh, me, 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 and only me work on this. And is is a completely different story. We need the support. We need the directions. You know, we need um, all the people that they can um, direct us to the resources available at the community and all the stuff that is out there, the help that is for us um, available, and we don't even know about it. Like Some people don't know those resources and help exist um, for their business. And um, luckily, thanks to Josue, um, I did find out about all the resources available for me, and um, it's been amazing and a great and you know help for my business like yeah. I, I I've been achieved um, so much my license my permits um, my website my social media I know those all those um, achievement I got it because of the resources out there and all the help available for us the financial workshop through Chase it's been amazing for me as as a business owner I have no clue about financial okay <laughs> <laughs> but you know thanks to them I now I have knowledge of all that and yeah. it is available for everyone and most of the people doesn't know about it so mm -hmm. that's why I'm so happy you know, to be here and share my experience with everybody so they can they can know that yeah. they are there and they, they're available for everyone. Just we, yeah. like you was for me. we thank you for that. Oh, uh, yeah. Very. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer, um, the Census Bureau has come up with the latest statistics about the Latino population in the greater Philadelphia area. And as far as I can see, the Latino population is a sleeping giant. Mm -hmm. Tremendous potential uh, financial power in this demographic and I wonder if you can talk about large financial institutions recognizing the significance of this tremendous and diverse group yeah. in Philadelphia. Well the good news is they have found out. The bad news is my Yay. phone is ringing off the phone. <laughs> right. And I think that recognizing that the Latino community is a sleeping giant really waking up because I think that if you if you think about it, we are 10 years younger than the average American, right? So mm -hmm. our, our median age is about 28 years compared to 38 years for, for the general population. That is prime economic development, wealth creating age, right? So the markets are waking up. People are realizing that if we invest in this group of people in this demographic, if we do it right, it will yield a lot of results. So the, the, the race is on, right? And who does it well? Who does it best? Who does it with real meaningful um, and, and real value, right? So there are those that just want to show up and say, we like you and we're gonna be your friends. And there are those that want to really do the work, mm -hmm. build the relationships through a really meaning, truly investing in the community. And my sense is that those are the ones that are going to win the race, right? Um, I do think that the approach that Chase is taking is a particularly interesting one, and I think it will yield real results that are here for the long run. And um, so one of the things I wanted to say is, like, I know everybody wants to meet Josue right now. He's <laughs> right. Gonna be a super <laughs> so, you know, luckily for all of you, Josue will be speaking at the Closing the Gap Conference, which is sponsored by Chase, yep. in June 20th. So, so I think for those that are curious, you know, just a few days, you know, your phone is going to be ringing <laughs> off the hook. Come and get to know him in person in, yeah. on, on June 20th. Yeah, I think that's such a great point because people are recognizing the tremendous power of the Latino uh, demographic in the greater Philadelphia area. But there's one thing to recognize it and there's one thing to be able to tailor your, um, your future business plan to incorporate and be sensitive to the cultural 
implications of the Latino population and the diversity of this population. Now, Chandra, um, you're working with these community centers, and I wonder if you can tell us what are some of the things that you wished people knew about the community centers? One, how comfortable it is. Mm -hmm. So people come in and they never want to leave. <laughs> um, so in the front of the community center, there is a cafe internet space where people can come in and, and sit and um, use the space for Zooms or just, you know, the internet. Um, that is of no fee. Then we have an amazing living room where you can talk to a host way or the other bankers or myself um, and it's just very comfortable and we have you know marketing that is going on different um, uh, information and knowledge and then you know the the community room we, we jokingly say the community room is the star right um, because it fits you know we're able to every third Wednesday of the month have a master class which fits 75 up to 75 people um, and again it's it's of no fee so if you're an organization and you would like to utilize that space for any type of workshops or or meetings we'd love to have the chamber you can just you know give me a call or an email and you can utilize the room. Um, the history is still there, um, even though it is it is modernized, but it still has its bank integrity. We have a vault that we don't use, but people love to take a picture mm -hmm. by the vault. Um, so it still embodies that you know that kind of old banking. Um, and it's, it, we have youth that come in there. I mean, it, it's full of life. Um, we have young people that are coming that are learning credit. They're learning budgeting and savings. They're learning how to be young entrepreneurs. Um, um, getting that resource of, you know, how do I structure my business? How do I set myself up to have a great credit score, right? Um, goal setting. So it's a really good place to, to and it embodies family. So as, as Josue talked about, the networking piece of it, people come, they're collaborating, we're seeing some of the same people coming every month, and then they're bringing others with them. Mm -hmm. So um, we're, we have, you know, A and B, we're going to have to have A and B workshops That's because right. uh, people are not just coming themselves, but they're bringing people with them. So it's a really good space. And I invite, again, people, it's very accessible through SEPTA, and you can walk up to it if you live in the community. Josue, um, one of the challenges for many small businesses is the complexity sometimes of interacting with banks. And I wonder if you can talk about how Chase is tailoring your support of small businesses by making things a little more accessible. Talk about that. Yeah, so I, again, the, the demystification, if you will, of certain processes I think is important. Um, in my previous role, when I used to be a, a branch manager, there was a business that had came uh, for a loan, and um, she was declined for the loan. And when I looked at the reason for declaration for the decline, it was too many inquiries in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. So I looked at the number of inquiries, and we were number nine. So I asked her, why is it that you've gone to eight different banks and I'm the ninth one that you come to? And she says, well, all, all of the banks are declining me, so I'm just going to the next bank. And my question was, well, did you understand why you were being declined? And her response was no. So the education piece came in once again of saying, if there's a reason for decline, find out why and see if there's something that either A, is incorrect on your credit score or something that can be improved. Um, and having those conversations with business owners, with that financial education is, is important. So, you know, Chandra and I are oftentimes tag teaming and we're able to assist business owners and the community at large with understanding how their personal credit score is important. And if there are any challenges there, then they could make the improvements and understand what 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 it how how it's how the uh, score is determined and what they're able to do to affect that score and again oftentimes individuals may not know that so just being able to demystify it helping them to understand the the fundamentals of what their personal credit is and how to access business credit is one way that we can help uh, business owners mm, that's and the great. individuals yeah Rosemary, tell us um, more about some of the things that you feel that other small businesses need to know that they don't know. You um, jumped into the pool and you reached out and you got the support that you needed. 
um, so many businesses, maybe as you might have started out with, did not realize that you really need to network. You really need to reach out to these resources like Chase and the Hispanic Chamber. So tell us, give some advice to other small businesses getting started. Um, the first adv advice I would give to um, any entrepreneur and minority business owner is to reach out as being part of the, the chamber. And that, that was my first jump. As soon as I, you know, joined the chamber, I knew about some resources. I knew about um, the program that Chase has um, for mentoring, and and that opened doors. That you know, knowledge is everything. And like I said before, we start a business without knowing anything about what is you know the foundation of a business. So the only way that you can actually is like she said, networking. Um, getting you know, the resources from the right person, the guidance from the, the people that really gonna guide you through to get your business solid and, and get the foundation of your business and, and do it right. Like something as simple as cash flow, as entrepreneur, I didn't, I didn't even have a clue. I, I got the money, I spent the money, <laughs> and that's it. And that is not, uh, not what how it, it works. No, that is not how it works. So that, those are the things that the only way that you know um, and, and, it, and to help your business to, to success and you know, move forward is getting the guidance from the, the correct you know, places and the correct agencies, that, the, the right um, mentoring. Um, being part of the, the the chamber really helps me a lot, and that was that when my business actually started mm -hmm. as as a business. So uh, we need the networking. We need to um, get the knowledge and and, and and be curious and and, and learn um, what is a business about and and what is that you need to do to get the right guidance to get it, you know, a successful business. Yeah, that's great. And if I, if I could add yes, right please. To, to that, you know, earlier I had, had said that, you know, she did the work. And I think that that's important, right, that, that she did the work. And what does that mean? You know, she took her hobby and turned it into a side hustle, but then put it into a legitimate business with her formation, uh, doing the work that's needed to research how to get the licensing, how to get the permits, what's needed to rent her commercial kitchen, uh, doing the work of getting her minority certification through the National Minority Supplier Diversity Council. So I could say these resources are available, but I'm not going to fill out the application for her, right? So she did the work of, of uh, obtaining these things that are necessary for a legitimate business to move forward. But then again, with his guidance. <laughs> there you go. That was that. That was the key. He's guys, and he yes. told me this is what you needed to do. Key. That's right. He was the key. And Lorraine, that is very important, right? Yes. It's the running a business is not easy, and if you're not willing to put in the work, then you're not going to be successful. Now, it is a community endeavor, right? In which you have bankers, you have people, you have the chamber. We are here, and we can connect you, and we can help solve your problems. So the majority of challenges that entrepreneurs face are solvable. You need to be willing and able mm -hmm. to do the work. Mm -hmm. We can guide you, we can tell you who to call and where to go. Our business is encouraging you and guiding you. Mm -hmm. Your business as an entrepreneur is execution. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of great ideas in the world. Brilliance is everywhere. The art is in the execution and you will only be as successful as the effort that you put in, guided by the experts mm -hmm. around you, right? Nice. And so, so I think what you have done, it is very difficult, it is commendable, so congratulations. Right? Yes. Thank yeah. you, guys. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to grind with guidance. Yes. Grind with yes. guidance. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because folks show up every month, so we're mm -hmm. in our sixth month, six it's yep. been six it's workshops. Six months in June. Six yeah. months in June, and we see the consistency 
every month. People are there sitting in the seats or networking and, and we've seen collaborations, right? So it's not just even the knowledge, but even trying to figure out how businesses can come together and create unique experiences. So yeah, kudos. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Well, um, let's talk about the $30 billion racial equity commitment. $30 billion, let's, uh, let's say that three times, to help improve access to banking and the financial health in black, Hispanic, and Latino communities. Tell us what that means to us. Well, again, it means access to, to resources, um, accesses to um, personnel. So when, when you say 30 billion, right? So there are 150 community managers across the, the nation. Um, and then that's, that number is growing. We have Josue who has, there's about, how many senior business consultants? About 60 across the country. 60 mm -hmm. across the country. We also have community home lending advisors. So the other thing is, um, you know, a, a part of that is affordable home ownership. So we have the persons um, in our community, community home lending that are geared towards educating persons to think like a, a financial institution so that they can get approved and get the best rate because they are having the best um, score. And even in that, you know, the community home lending advisors work with entrepreneurs, right? Because that's a different um, uh, way to work. And so the community home lending advisors work with them as well. Then we have the 17 um, community branches. So that's a part of the commitment. And then there is some uh, global philanthropy and corporate responsibility where we are partnering with nonprofit organizations, um, creating family sustainable wages mm -hmm. in the local cities where our branches and our community centers sit. So it is the people as well as access to the resources. Right. And let's dig more down into that 30 billion, Josue. So when we're talking about racial equity. Um, it's not simply about throwing money at mm -hmm. a community, right? It's about understanding that community. I wonder if you can talk more about how Chase is looking at the community and understanding the community in working with this $30 billion. Sure. So, you know, when I had my first conversation about that Thirty billion with a B. Um, they're like, you know, are you sure it's not thirty million? And I think that the reality is that yes, uh, it is thirty billion, but then there are also boots on the ground mm -hmm. that are attached to that, right? So the three pillars of the thirty billion dollars is the first one is uh, minority home ownership and affordable housing. So there are community home lenders like my colleague Tanika Ricard, who's here with us tonight who does that, right, walks through with individuals to help them understand what the home buying process is and how they can position themselves to become a homeowner. So that's the first pillar. The second pillar is through financial literacy and financial education, which is the work that Chandra does as a community manager. So again, boots on the ground. And then third, to assist small businesses. Uh, you know, we're looking to extend credit to 11,000 small businesses over the next five years. And what we've been able to do is to adjust our credit scoring in order to help businesses access the capital that they need, but then also to have uh, senior consultants like myself in Philadelphia. We also have Nathan McCann and Tim Roseboro who are meeting with business owners to have these conversations. <laughs> So in 2021, we helped about uh, 1,000 businesses across the country. In 2022, about 3,000 businesses, 28,000 individuals that participated in workshops that we had, about 250 businesses in Philadelphia alone that went through our program. And on average, we have about 50 businesses that we are mentoring through curated one-on-one -on -one coaching and conversations to again, meet them where they are, mm -hmm understand what their unique needs are and help them to be positioned in order to take advantage of opportunities that might present themselves. Opportunities could also mean um, having your books in order so that if someone expresses interest in buying your business, you can present to them on paper documented what the value is of the business. But if your response is, well, you know what, I haven't filed my taxes in the last three years, but I have a really good business and it's profitable, well, show me the receipts, right? Where's the evidence? By being organized and having your tax returns, now you can provide that evidence that, hey, the business is profitable, this is a good 
opportunity for you. Um, so again, just being able to, to um, come alongside of minority business owners in a myriad of different ways and to have boots on the ground, right? Mm -hmm. People who are delivering that intellectual capital that's needed, I think is a distinction versus just having money that's available mm -hmm. and wishing and hoping that people find out of, about it mm -hmm. and apply and maybe perhaps they have a good credit score and they'll get approved. Then if you don't, well then, you know, maybe, you know, try better luck next time, right? Mm -hmm. But instead we can have the conversation to navigate them through the process. Great point. Access to capital, for my Ed, is a, a major part of that. So Josue said 11,000 um, small, business, small business owns mm -hmm. and it's 40,000 mortgages that we would like to also mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. deliver in our neighborhoods as right. well. Right, that's one way to uh, to build wealth. Mm -hmm. build generational home ownership. Wealth. That's right. Generational yeah. wealth, that's fantastic. And it's been a barrier for so many individuals in our communities and so this is wonderful news. Rosemary, I want you to tell us more about your business and more about your dreams for the future of how you would like to see this business evolve. Well, um, Mama Sofrito uh, Manufacture um, complete seasoning, cooking base, um, Sofrito, as well as uh, chimichurri, um, regular chimichurri sauce and a pepper chimichurri um, sauce. And um, I wanted to see my business um, available to everyone um, out there. I wanted to, you know, make my business grow as much as I can. And um, I know it's, 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 it's hard, it's, it's, a, it's a long, you know, path, but I'm able to do what I have to do just to make that happen. And um, I think I'm, with the help I'm, I'm, and the guidance I'm, you know, I'm getting, I think I'm, I'm doing fantastic. Now I have my um, minority certification, which is an, an awesome um, opportunity for me. is 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 very very um, an achievement that I really thank you, Josue. I really <laughs> wanted to do so. So, um, like I said, I'm 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 working on you know make it grow as as, as big as possible. And, you want to you know, see your sofrito and everywhere, everywhere, <laughs> everywhere, <laughs> everywhere, and, you online know. in the stores. That's right. That's um, I want. I wanted to see it everywhere, and I know go and as as far as I can, um, and possible, and for me, and and make the work to do it. You know, to make it happen. Yeah, yeah. I see that dream. Yeah, it's and, a beautiful and the important thing. thing about that is that there are steps, right? That right. that it doesn't happen overnight. Right and that there are certain aspects of it that need to be achieved and then that builds on the next one and it builds on the next one um, but it, it does require the work and the steps yeah and it looks like you're putting the work in she's putting right. the work in achieving <laughs> the steps one step at a time that's right. that's right how do you need an elephant one, one bite, bite at a time <laughs> so jennifer many projections have the latinx population growing exponentially by 2050. Mm -hmm. how can we work towards equitable representation uh, in business to ensure that our community growth is proportionate to our banking potential? Well, what I would say is that we are in many ways a sleeping giant, right? Uh, Latinos are the most entrepreneurial demographic in the country, and the banks know it. Now, the challenge is that our businesses start smaller and remain smaller even as they mature. So the real challenge is dual. dual. It's a challenge for institutions like Chase to develop the products and the resources that help entrepreneurs grow and create the past and provide the intellectual capital. But in my opinion, even equally, if not more important, is challenging entrepreneurs themselves to grow and become the economic engine of the community. Why? Because what we know in the Latino community is that entrepreneurs who own, the, Latinos who own a business are, are wealthier than Latinos who do not. Mm. So entrepreneurship in the Latino community is truly a wealth creating opportunity. But we cannot remain as solo entrepreneurs. We can't remain as a two person enterprise. Mm -hmm. That's exhausting, mm -hmm. right? The challenge is really getting to that million dollar mm -hmm. and above. So to get that, you need the whole Swiss in the world. Mm -hmm. You need the desire and the 
we'll say the, 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 that desire and wanting to really get the work done. If you have those two things, the rest of us are around here to make sure that you get there, mm -hmm. right? But the challenge is twofold. It's not just on the banks, it's also on our community, our entrepreneurs to grow. We do have the opportunity to uh, get questions from our audience. So I'm gonna throw it out to you. If you have any, great. If not, we'll just keep moving. But do any of you in our audience have any questions that they'd like to uh, share with our panel members? Yes, tell us who you are and what's your question. Hi, my name is Eric Barragan. I am a volunteer for the Mexican Association of, uh, Association of Mexican Business Owners. And I want to know uh, how people in a commercial corridor like 9th Street can approach to, approach to Chase to start a conversation uh, and to get in touch with you. So business o the question is how can business owners on the 9th Street corridor um, be in touch with us. Yes. So um, we could certainly have a conversation, uh, whether it's via email or you know in, in person. Um, and I think the important thing to mention is that the training material that we have, the, the master classes that we have, those that we do in partnership with Chandra at the community center are available in Spanish as well. So both the presentation, the workbooks that we have are available in Spanish and in English and Spanish-speaking business owners could take advantage of that information. So one of the ways to get a hold is via email, josue.figueroa at chase.com, or a phone call at 856-873-6906, but I'll share with you in more detail later. But those would be the ways to get a hold of us, to just start the conversation and then see if there is a match, right, to, to participate in the mentorship program. Thank I think you. this is a great example of someone who came here to take advantage mm -hmm. of this fantastic opportunity to meet these people. So kudos to you for that. And for those who are watching online, hopefully you'll also take Project advantage Project. as well. Chandra. Project as well. So the community room is space, right? Mm -hmm. So if you know you have the one-offs for the for the mentoring program, that's fine as well. We also would love to host you for a master class. So we have, you know, the 52nd Street Vendor Association. We have associations that come into the room and we do uh, in-person workshops as well as hybrid, right? So um, and there's four to five workshops that we can share with you that we do in the in the classes in the actual community room and you can contact myself and then the other my counterpart who's in the Aramingo branch either one of us you can um, contact us and we can schedule a class for the association as well thank you very much you're welcome okay we have a question over there Five job, but I, I, uh, I've been successful in selling paintings online. Um, what would be like my first step to turn my side hustle into a business? So the question is that you you you're an artist, right? And you sell your art. What would be the first step to turn your side hustle into a business? So certainly the the documentation, right? The certificate of formation, your EIN number, obtaining that information would be important in order to have a business that is set up as opposed to, as you referenced, the side hustle. Uh, the next thing that I would say is to solicit advice over opinion, right? So someone who hasn't started a business and you go to them and you ask them for their opinion, they'll probably tell you why it can't be done, how hard it is to get done, how crazy you are for trying to do it, <laughs> versus soliciting advice from someone who has started a business and can tell you, you know, where the bumps in the roads were and uh, along the way, the, you know, the feeling of, of defeat that, that might come, uh, and then the resources that are available. So I think it's really important for business owners, right? Uh, many times folks say that they have a business, but then if you talk to them more about it, it really is just a side hustle or a hobby, and they sell things on the side. But really getting the certificate of formation, getting, if you need the, the, the you know, your insurance, um, uh, the, your, your tax identification number for the business, the EIN number, a business checking account, that's something that's also critically yeah. important mm -hmm. that oftentimes folks when they've got a hobby and they sell something, they put their money into their personal checking account. But if you have a legitimate business and you have your EIN number, then you should have a business checking account as well and keeping your personal funds 
separate from business funds, not commingling the two together. Okay. And yes. from my perspective, um, I would add to that and would say you need a plan, mm -hmm. right? A business plan, yeah. You do not build a house from the second floor. Up. <laughs> you build a house, foundation, and you move up. So business is similar, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people have the idea and start selling, right? But they have not done the critical things that need to be done. And so we are the Hispanic Chamber, have a partnership with Widener University, and mm -hmm. we do a Spanish language course, which you participated mm -hmm. on, uh, that's called Camino al Éxito. And it's about ideation, testing that idea. Do I really want to be an entrepreneur? Mm -hmm. What is it that I'm trying to sell? Is it really going to fly? Is it really going to work? And you go through that process, and then you have like a 90-day action plan that says, Oh, I'm not certified, I need to get certified. I don't have an account, I need to get my business account. And at least you have a little bit of a pathway that sets you up. And, and, and you have, in some ways, <coughs> tested that idea with proper advice, not opinion, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and I think that's a, a real good way of, of getting that started, getting the engine running and having your concrete steps and then meeting the Josues of the world mm -hmm. that, can, that can then take you to the next level. Do we have any more questions from our audience? Or any online? I don't know if uh, there are any questions online. Yeah. You have one more question? Go ahead. Where can I get the sofrito? <laughs> oh. <laughs> we all want to know the answer to that question. Well, um, I do. I don't have a physical store yet, but I do have a website. It's Mama Sofrito. Dot com. Um, you can have access and buy all the uh, products um, through my website. You can find the sofrito, you can find the chimichurri sauce, as well as the pepper chimichurri sauce. Um, and it's available for you at any time. 24-7, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> at any time you wanted to get the sofrito from Mama Sofrito. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Hi, my name is Rolando Sanchez in uh, for Rosemary. Have you thought of um, reaching out to like uh, various Latino restaurants and having and selling your product in their stores, uh, in their restaurants? Uh, it might, you know, be a, a leg up. So there's I, a suggestion of selling your product at various restaurants. So it is on my list, <laughs> but um, like I said before, um, being an entrepreneur is not just have an idea to, you know, come up with a business. It's a lot um, that you need to um, learn. Is 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 that everyday learning process, and every day that you, as a business owner, you have so much to do. And um, I will say that I'm taking everything step by step, um, and that is definitely on my to-do list um, soon. But um, right now, I was so into all the licenses, all the permits, and you know, being certified and get my my website, get my labels done. It it it, it was a list of guidance and 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 stuff that I have to, like she said. Um, we as entrepreneur believe that oh, we have an idea, we have a business, and but it's not the reality. So. When you jump and you know steps, unfortunately, you have to go back. Mm -hmm. And like like she said, you have to start the house from mm -hmm. the foundation and up. So that's uh, you know a mistake that you know I did it myself. I was running, but when I get to the tenth step, I was like, okay, I missed so many that you have to go back and go one by one because it's it's a process, an everyday process. And that's what I'm doing right now, and um, but yeah, definitely I want to take uh, you know supermarkets, restaurants, you know, bodegas, stores, you name it. I'm I'm, I'm gonna get there. <laughs> sure. So your your manufacturing output right now is is it in the thousands, in the ten thousands? I mean, product. Uh, mm -hmm. How many sofritos can you make and? at this current time in your current, uh, you know. Uh, so how many sofritos can you make right now? Okay, as of right now, I do have um, a full-time employee and, and, and myself um, looking um, 
forward to hire more people because the demand is growing, thank God. And um, yeah, but I think that, yeah, we are able to get to the 10,000 if we have to. Yeah. So, you know, and yes. the important thing is, again, as I mentioned with the steps, right? So she's not selling sofrito out of recycled, you know, uh, butter plastic containers, right? You know, so, right, the, the glass containers with yes. the labeling and, and uh, the logo and so forth. So just building that capacity, the foundation, mm -hmm. and then um, having the commercial kitchen to increase the capacity, which she does have now, is allowing for her to get to that point, right? Yes, so the, the, the engine is, is building momentum. Walk down 9th Street. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you might have some customers here already, so you never know. That will be awesome. It's about networking. Um, so as we close out, I'd like to each of you to just share with us your resources, how we contact you, any final statements that you'd like to make. So Chandra Williams, Community Manager for Chase, we'll start with you. Go ahead. Sure. So again, it was a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Lorraine, and thank you, Altia. So I can be reached at the community branch, which is located at 15 South 52nd Street. Um, if you'd like to know more about the classes and the resources, you can email me at Chandra, C-H-A-N-D-R-A dot Williams at chase.com. And we're taking appointments to come and to take tours of the space. And um, right now, we do know that for the entrepreneurs that are, are viewing in the room every third Wednesday, from 10 to 11.30 a.m., there is a master class that's being held in the community room. Fantastic. Josue Figueroa, Senior Business Consultant for Chase. Tell us more. Yeah, so same thing, right? The best way to get a hold of me is via email, and that would be Josue, J-O-S-U-E <coughs> dot Figueroa, F-I-G-U-E-R-O-A at chase.com. And uh, we can schedule a time over Zoom to learn more about the business to learn, uh, teach, you know, uh, tell you more about the entrepreneur mentorship program and uh, see if there's a match. Rosemary, you've already said it, but uh, repeat how we can get in touch with your sofrito. Well, um, like I said, um, through my website, it's mamasofrito.com. Um, and same thing with all social media, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, it's mamasofrito um, itself. So. Feel free to get a hold of me, contact my, my, my social media pages, and we'll be there to help you. Yes, we'll be following you on Instagram for sure. Yes, <laughs> please do so. <laughs> Jennifer Rodriguez, President and CEO of Hispanic uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce for Greater Philadelphia. How do we get in touch with you? Well, the best way is through our website, philahispanicchamber.org, and social media, uh, GPHCC. Um, and it's always the best way of getting us all the information that you need about the event and the resources. We're constantly communicating that way. Fantastic. Well, we'd like to thank all of you for your expertise, for your personal stories, and for all the tools and uh, information that you have to provide. And hopefully they uh, provided some important points that people out in our audience and out in the intranets uh, were able to take advantage of. I'd like to thank you all once again and also thank Aldea, for providing this opportunity to have this roundtable discussion on comprehensive and effective consumer and community banking. Again, Aldea is always providing great information for the community. I'm Lorraine Ballard-Morrill, and we want to thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.